What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. It is still like zero degrees outside, so there is no chance of me going out to the range. Luckily, I still have some footage to go over from SHOT Show, one of the parties that I actually did not show you guys last week in the full recap video. So the event that we are looking at today is known as the Gift of Gun, and this was put on by my friend Tracy Guns on Instagram. Some of you may follow her, you may have seen her in some of my previous videos in the past. And this was the first time that this event ever occurred, so I was really unsure going into it what to expect. I didn't know what type of sponsors would be there, I didn't actually know how the whole thing was structured. But it turned out being a super awesome event with a lot of things going on all at once. The attendance was great. There were a ton of people there and there is a lot of information to go through. I filmed a lot, shot a lot of awesome guns, got my hands on a bunch of very cool products, some of which I have here with me. So basically, just like last week, we are going to sort of skim through all of the footage and I'll give you a rundown of who I talked to, the companies that were there, some of the other influencers, YouTubers, Instagrammers who were in attendance. There's a ton of stuff to get into here, so let's just start right from the top. This took place at range 702 in Las Vegas, just off of the Strip. This was open to the public, so really anyone who knew about it could attend and then actually use the range and shoot all of the different guns that they had out there for us. This also gave you a chance to talk to the different companies, so you kind of just went around from booth to booth, sort of like a mini shot show, and then you got some hands-on with the products. One of the first companies that I came across was, of course, Polymer 80. I have worked with them in the past. I've built a number of Polymer 80s, and I already covered a lot of their stuff from their booth at SHOT Show, but they did have some more firearms there for you to check out. Right next to Polymer 80 were the guys from Faxon, and they had a bunch of their different guns there. A lot of people have actually been asking me questions on their new pistol line, and as you can see here, they look pretty dope. Some crazy slide serrations and window cuts. They had some equally crazy framework to match and trigger jobs, base plates for the magazines. Pretty Gucci-fied Glock type of setups there. And I believe in the future here, I will be able to get my hands on one of their barrels to test out in one of my personal builds, so you guys can stay tuned for that. Right next to them were the guys from KCI USA. They make magazines for a bunch of different guns, and they sent me home with some pretty ridiculous stuff, so let me show you that. I will be using the Atom Smasher as an example for one of their magazines that they did send me home with. How about that? A hundred round drum magazine, which is of course see-through on the back there, so you can see all 100 rounds in there. This thing is heavy. How ridiculous is that? Scale of one to 10. Nine and a half. Nine and a half, yeah, it's pretty, pretty absurd. I have yet to use this thing other than shooting it at the actual event, but I'm hoping that it runs. One thing that I did notice right off the bat is that they do not lock back on both this one and the Glock version. Here is the Glock version, 50 round drum mags in my Gucci-fied pistol build. These things are super dope if you do not like to reload because chances are you will not have to if you have a magazine like this. Another one of the sponsors was Three Kings Tactical and they actually provided me with this compensator right here. I've actually never done a video on a compensator, especially for a gun like this. I have shot some compensated guns on the channel in the past, but I never had one dedicated to put on a threaded barrel like I do now. So chances are you guys will see a video on this or you will at least see it in some future videos as well as a lot of this other stuff that the sponsors sent us influencers home with. Could you imagine a first mag impression with this? <laughs> 50 rounds. Do, do, do. Yeah, I have a pretty good impression of this thing now. All right, now moving forward, let's talk about when we actually got out onto the range. The first thing that I ended up shooting was one of the super lightweight ARs from Master of Arms. You guys may have seen an Instagram post about this. I posted just the gas block, which is titanium, fully adjustable, super lightweight, and all of the details that go into that did not stop there. That extreme crucial attention to detail can be found throughout the entire rifle. When picking this thing up, the only thing that I could say was, dude, this thing is so light. That's really like all the time that I had with it. I only put a couple rounds down range with it. The rifle comes in at about 3.75 pounds and the pistol version comes in at about three and a half pounds, which is insanely light. I believe their pistol loaded up with 30 rounds of 5.56 would actually be lighter than an unloaded Desert Eagle, which is insane to me. 
There's a lot of really cool engineering and machining that went into these things. One of the main things is that they're using a sub pencil barrel. So you think of a pencil barrel and then think of something thinner and lightweight smaller than that. When you're working with something that small and lightweight, you actually have to have more structural integrity around it in order for it to function properly. So they have this cool sort of tension device that comes down the, the carbon fiber handguard on there and it's like tensioned together. It's really hard for me to explain just by kind of telling you without actually having the rifle here to show you. So hopefully in the future, I will be able to get my hands on one of those and do a full dedicated Sunday gun day like I sort of promised you guys on Instagram. That thing is really just in a league of its own. And speaking of attention to detail, you guys know what went into building the Atom Smasher and all of the super meticulous details that I kind of went into when putting this thing together. So that thing is basically the same, but on a whole different level in terms of weight and lightweight featherweight weighing basically nothing whereas this thing weighs like 50 pounds now with this mag in it then right next to that were the guys from full conceal the folding glocks i sort of mentioned this in last week's video now i'm still really split on how i feel about these things to make a long story short basically i don't really see the point in a folding glock like that they had a 43 they had a 19 and then they had a 19 in a micro roni brace i understand that like the engineering and everything behind it is cool but i don't really see an issue that it is solving it's sort of one of those things that's like it's cool that you can do it but why it's not it's not helping me in any way I can't think of any situation where I would want a folding polymer handgun over just a normal handgun can you think of anything like that why would you want your gun to fold I don't know <laughs> I don't know seal better I don't even know. Conceal better so you can put it in your pocket? I have no idea. If you need your gun, you want it to be right there right away. So so I did get a chance to shoot them. I sort of got a more in-depth look at the safety mechanisms, and it does seem relatively safe without me like actually long-term testing it. Supposedly, you can carry them in their folded configuration with one in the chamber, which again, I don't really know how I feel about that. But here you see Mike from Knockout Lights shooting it in the Micro Roni Brace. And then I first got my hands on the 43. It basically shot just like a normal 43. The trigger actually might be a little bit better because it is flat, which I prefer over a stock curved trigger. The stock triggers on the 43 never really bothered me. I don't think that they are that terrible. So shooting it seemed pretty normal to me. And then moving on to the Micro Roni, having it in that thing was, I don't know, like I said in the previous video, that thing, the whole Micro Roni modular Glock compact, like sticking things together to make something that it is not. That whole thing really is not for me. The folding Glock, I don't know, I just don't think it's for me either. So when you put those two things together, I'm just like, nah. If you guys would want to see my full thoughts on something like a full concealed Glock, you can let me know in the comments down below. But like I said, I don't think that it is really solving any problems that I've had in the past. Yes, you can fold it up and it will be roughly like the footprint of a cell phone if you're talking about the 43. But I don't know. I know a lot of people have kind of reviewed them on YouTube and they've gotten a ton of backlash and that's not something that I want. So I don't know. Let me know. And then moving down the lines of guns that we were shooting, I came across all of the Rex guns. They had the Rex 01, they had the Rex Alpha, and they also had the new, which isn't really released yet in the United States, but they had the Delta. So starting with the 01, I would sort of compare this to the Sig Legion. Similar form factor, it felt very similar in my hand as well. I would have to shoot them side by side to actually make this conclusion, but I believe the trigger might be a little bit better. The front serrations are nice, the sights were okay, as well. I'm not a huge fan of single double action like that, hammer fired guns, especially if I'm talking about a gun that I'm going to carry. But overall, it is a very cool platform and it's cool to see a small, younger company come up with some of these very nice, high quality firearms. And then moving on to the Alpha, this thing just looks like a beast. Have you ever seen this thing before? No. It's dope. It's a nine. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. It's pretty cool looking. It does look like a comp gun. I think a lot of people are actually using these in competition circuits and stuff like that. So the trigger on this is a little bit better than the Zero One. This thing obviously just looks way more aggressive. Front serrations, it has a nice long rail on there. I kind of like the way the front of it is beveled. It sort of reminds me of like a, almost like a Desert Eagle, I guess. The ergos on this felt a little bit better in my hand. There is a fairly long trigger pull and double action, but the slide on this thing is very, very smooth. When you just wrap 
track the slide without even shooting it, you can just tell that it's going to shoot very smooth. The Rex Alpha race gun is coming in at a MSRP of about $1,000, $1,099. I think when you're comparing that to other guns that are coming out now in its market like that new Walther, I would definitely opt for the Rex Alpha over that Q5 match, whatever the heck it's called. I would probably need more hands-on time with it. It looks like you can get it around 950 on some different sites. But again, it is very cool to see them coming out with new guns, especially for this third one that I took a look at, the Delta. So because of the whole government shutdown that just recently happened and everything, this was actually the only gun in the States and and we all had the chance to shoot it, which was very cool. This is going to be very competitive with your M&P 2.0s and your Glock 19s, your CZ P10Cs. So it's 15 in one, striker fire, double stack. It has a very nice trigger. I actually like the profile of the shoe and everything. The first thing that I thought about when picking it up, and I just kept saying it over and over again in the video, I couldn't believe how light this thing actually is. Yeah, it's coming in at 22.2 ounces, which is very light, especially when you are comparing that against some of the competition. All of those ounces actually matter if it's something that you're going to carry. It has an ambidextrous magazine release button, interchangeable back straps, a very short trigger reset, which was definitely noticeable when shooting it and then it has all the typical stuff that you can get with some other firearms like an optional ambidextrous manual safety a loaded chamber indicator i'm excited to see what this thing will do once it hits the market i'm not exactly sure how much it is going to cost but if it is competitive with a lot of those other options out there i think a lot of people are going to give this gun a try i actually would not mind getting my hands on them once they become available and doing a full dedicated video on it because i've given a lot of these other guns a fair chance on the channel so hopefully i can make that happen in the future. And then we move down to the final portion of the whole range shooting experience. And by the time I got to this room, I was already tired of shooting. I really don't like shooting indoors. All of the concussion and the gases and everything is just not fun. I would much rather prefer shooting outside. I walked into the room and I saw a 50 BMG sitting on the table and I was like, nah that I'm not shooting that thing inside luckily the guy was like come on come in come in so I walked in the door and I saw this monstrosity sitting there kind of bolted into the table and this is what they call their quadzilla essentially it is four m4s full auto mounted together with a sort of thumb trigger operation this thing shoots 1400 rounds per minute so about 120 rounds I dumped down range like you saw in the intro there in about about three seconds. That would roughly equal probably like $22. So that thing burns through money faster than I could actually light a $20 bill on fire. So again, here's my first experience with that. Luckily, the guy convinced me to come into the room and shoot that thing because I did not see it. And if you ever get a chance to go to range 702, I definitely recommend doing that. Yeah, it's gonna try and rock up and shoot under the ceiling. Ready? <laughs> Yeah, don't be shy, hit him. So that thing was super fun. Obviously, you guys don't need me to tell you that. You can tell just by looking at the video. And then we continued on with the night and everything. There were a lot more sponsors there. And if you guys want to check out any of the sponsors of this event, I will leave a link in the description down below. Over the next couple of weeks, you will see me posting some more of their products and everything on Instagram. There is actually a lot of very cool stuff. And chances are, if you like what you see here on the channel, there are going to be a few things that you would like to check out. So after talking with some more of the sponsors, I went down to like the VIP area where they had set up a shooting competition between everyone who was there on the media side of things. We were doing a single elimination bracket where they had everyone lined up against each other and of course I got chosen to be in the first round up against this guy. So we're doing the shooting competition and guess who I get put up against first round? True Exodus! <laughs> You're gonna lose! <laughs> So unfortunately, no one was there to film the actual competition, so I grabbed my camera right after the first round and just check this out. So it's because these of these ridiculous glasses that Talon won the no, no, competition no. against me. My gun stopped working. I'm gonna show you which gun it is. Move right into now. the second round, baby. <laughs> so supposedly, 
the glasses and the gun malfunctioning because we were shooting frangible ammo. I don't know exactly what went down because there was obviously a wall in between us, but I ended up moving on to the next round. And then after that, the whole bracket got kind of screwed up. People were leaving and we were switching out guns and things like that. It seemed like there were some personal battles going on in there. A lot of people were kind of going out of order just to shoot against each other. But long story short, I ended up placing third, I believe, overall. I got knocked out by my buddy John Knapp. You guys may know him as well. He's been in some of my older previous videos. He's a competition shooter and he shoots probably way more than I do. So there were definitely no hard feelings there and hopefully I can make it out to the next one and we can sort of have a rematch. That way I can place a little bit better next time. But hey, third place overall, I'll take that. So after the whole shooting competition, it sort of wrapped up for the night, but we actually went back the next day to check out some more stuff there. We went back again for some more quadzilla shooting, which is ridiculous. I was actually in the room then when they were shooting the 50 BMG some more. That thing is super violent as it is, so being inside of a small confined area like that, definitely not the most pleasant thing in the world. I got the chance to shoot some pistol caliber carbines from Soul Invictus. I'm really on an AR9 kick as of lately, so hopefully I will get my hands on one of those soon so I can do some videos. They're just super fun and obviously more cost effective than shooting 5.56 all of the time. And a lot of my videos are obviously shooting for fun and those things things are a ton of fun if you guys can't tell from the videos. There were also some AKs there with some ridiculous muzzle brakes on them. The one that you will see here was known as the LAF or the loud and flashy. I didn't get a close up of the brake but it is just a huge square compensator looking thing. It just shoots fireballs all over the place. Super concussive especially inside. So here's a quick look at that as well. And then that basically wrapped up our second night there and the final night before I actually had to fly home. And as we were walking out the door, one of the range officers was standing there and he was like, yo, we got one round of 50 BMG left and everyone was kind of in the same boat. We all go, that, I'm not shooting that thing inside. So we're all funneling out the door and I look back and he's still standing there holding the bullet and I was like, all right, fine, I'll do it. So I loaded that thing up and took my first 50 BMG shot indoors, and this is how that went. So, as you can see, it was not very pleasant. I did sort of go deaf. I probably should have been wearing double ear pro at the time, but I did bring home the brass just to show you guys the sheer size of this thing. Here is a nine millimeter round to compare it to. I could literally drop this thing inside of here, just like that. Just a super massive cartridge. This thing actually weighs more than a nine millimeter round while the bullet is still in there. I got a few other things from some of the sponsors while I was there as well. I have a trigger from Agency Arms. This is actually one of their new Syndicate triggers and you guys will see a full video on what the Syndicate actually is on the channel here in the future. Basically, it is a more cost effective way to get into a custom Agency Arms type of pistol. Syndicate is actually one of their newer like sub brands. And then Ameriglow hooked me up with some of these sites. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to put these on yet, but they make some of the best sites out there. I run these on a bunch of different Guns. So I guess that means I have to buy a whole nother gun to put these on, right? You'll put them on your gun for me yeah. and you'll let me know how they are. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate that. And then TAC Crew hooked it up with a little dry fire cartridge, magazine, laser ammo, whatever you want to call it. There's also a target that goes with this, which I do not have yet, as well as a bunch of other products that I said I do not have yet. It was hard to fly home with all this stuff because there was so much and my bag was already like 50 pounds. So here is another sponsor. This is what is known as the Stop Box. It is 
not a safe, it's not marketed as a safe, but it is a way to secure something like a firearm if you don't want someone like a kid to get into it. So there's no biometrics, there's no electricity, there's really nothing that can go wrong with it because it is all mechanical. You can set all these tabs to open with a different sort of key combination. So right now it is set to use my pinky and forefinger and thumb, simply press into it, and then you pop it open just like that. Again, this is not a safe for a gun, but if you want to have something sitting on your nightstand and you don't want people to have immediate access to it, this might be a good option for you. Another one was Classy Raptor Tactical. You guys may have seen them on Instagram before. They hooked me up with this sweet sort of beehive looking backplate for my Gucci Glock 43. Other than the barrel and the internals, that was really the only other thing that I have not touched on this gun. So that kind of completes the whole package. This thing is sweet already and now it's even a little bit cooler. And then KCI, of course, supplied these ridiculous mags. But Torque Mag was also another one of these sponsors. This is a 50 round mag right here. So again, if you do not like to reload, you can get yourself something like this and then you won't have to. So there were a bunch more sponsors out there. If you guys want to check out everyone who was involved, like I said, I will leave a link in the description down below. And you guys will of course see more of their products on my Instagram and maybe in some future videos here coming up to the channel soon. I do have to give a huge thank you to Tracy and everyone at Range 702 for allowing this whole thing to happen. It was a great experience. The turnout was incredible. There were so many people there. And hopefully the next one just kind of grows even more and we get some better attendance, some more sponsors, and then people will hopefully see the value in doing some awesome events like this. If you guys have any questions on the event or any of the sponsors, anyone who is involved, any of the products that were provided for this event, let me know in the comments down below and I will try to answer them as best as possible. Now, if you are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week and and that is going to be all for today. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.